Welcome Algebra 1 students to another Readings Review video. This is the Algebra 1 Common Core Readings Exam for January 2016 and these are going to be the answer solutions to part one. Oops, I don't like that red color. I like blue. These are going to be the solutions to part one, which is the multiple choice questions one through 12 of this examination. Um, real quick, just before we begin here, do not cheat under any circumstances. Please do refrain from cheating. You have to try the problems on your own in order to be successful in mathematics. And make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and visit my website at www.nysmathreadingsprep.com for more math content in Algebra 1 and future mathematical subjects. Without further ado, let's begin. Oh, I keep forgetting to mention this, that I use the TI Inspire CX. I suggest that you buy it. Um, go to my website. There's a link there that links you to Amazon. Amazon's probably the cheapest way to buy it. All right, without further ado, here we go. In the function f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 4, the minimum value occurs when x is what? So you could either do this one or two ways. One, realize that this is in vertex form already. Because if you have f of x is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 4, this is called vertex form of a parabola. So you could easily determine the vertex based off of this equation. So this in here, this represents a horizontal shift to the right because it is opposite the sign. So to the right by two units. And then the positive four, that represents a vertical shift up by Four units so your vertex is 2 comma 4 and your x value in this is going to be positive 2 so that's why it is going to be choice 2 however let's just say you didn't know how to do that go to your graphing calculator type this in x minus 2 quantity squared plus 4 your there it is menu analyze graph minimum click click your answer is 2 comma 4, so your x value right there is just the number 2. And that is going to be choice 2. All right, moving on to question 2. Uh, the graph below was created by an employee at a gas station. Which statement can be justified using the graph? So let's take a look at what's going on here. So this is gas sales, and this is the number of gallons and the cost of gas. That's interesting, though. Why would they... I would think that they would say number of gallons sold and then revenue earned. That, that that's, that's kind of a weird graph, but whatever. Let's just go with it. Choice one says, if 10 gallons of gas was purchased, $35 was paid. Well, $10 of gallons of gas, $35 was paid. No, about, 30, about $37 was paid. So that's not true. For every gallon of gas purchased... $3.75 was paid. So for every gallon, so if we take a look, okay, so what we need to do is we actually need to calculate the slope of this line. So this point over here, I could easily determine that this is the point 12, 45, and this point is definitely the point 8, 30, and this point over here is the point 4, 15. So I'm going to be using 8, 30, and 4, 15 to figure out the slope. So remember that your slope is your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. x1. So this is going to be 30 minus 15 all over 8 minus 4. This will give you 15 over 4, which is equivalent to $3.75. So therefore, your answer is definitely going to be choice 2 because for every gallon of gas purchased, yes, $3.75 was paid. All right, question three. For a recently released movie, the function y equals 119.67 times 0.61 raised to the x models the revenue earned y in millions of dollars each week x for several weeks after its release. Based on the equation, how much more money in millions of dollars was earned in revenue for week three than for week five. So in other words, you're going to plug in three for this, and then you're going to plug in five for that as well, and just see which one works. 
So I'm going to call this function f. So I'm going to say, well, what is f of 3? Well, f of 3 is equal to 119.67 times 0.61 raised to the third power. When you plug this into your calculator, just take my word for it, you get $27.163 million. Now, if you plug in 5, you get f of 5 is equal to 119.67 times 0.61 raised to the fifth power, which is 10.107 million. Now, all you're going to do is you're just going to subtract these. So 27.163 million minus 10.107 million dollars is equivalent to 17.06 million dollars is the amount of revenue that is earned from this movie. And that's going to be choice three. Number four, given the following expressions, which expressions results in an irrational number? Okay, irrational number. First of all, if you are adding, <clears throat> if you are adding two fractions, that is the ratio of two integers, this is a rational number. So I'm going to put big R. So that is rational. We're looking for irrational. One plus radical two. Wait a minute. Radical two is an irrational number. When you add a rational and an irrational number, it will result in an irrational number. So that is correct so far. And how you could tell is if you just go to your calculator and take one half, come on, one half plus radical two, you get an irrational number. So that definitely re would result in an irrational number. Now, Radical 5 is irrational, but if you take radical 5 times radical 5, that gives you the square root of 25, which reduces to 5. So this is actually rational. So that can't be it. Then 3 times rad 49, well, radical 49 is 7. 3 times 7 is 21. This is a rational number, so that is rational as well. So your answer is going to be choice 2, meaning that, uh, no, I'm sorry, choice 1, 2 only will result in an irrational number. Number five, which inequality is represented by the graph below? So let's talk about this. This has a y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 3. The slope is up 2 and to the right 1. So your slope is 2. This is a solid line, and it is shading above. Shade above. So we know that y is equal to mx plus b is the standard form of a line. Since this is an inequality, this is y has to be greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to shows shading above, and it's solid. The slope is 2, x plus the b value of negative 3. That is the same thing as saying choice 2. y is greater than or equal to uh, 2x minus 3. And uh, that is your answer. All right, number 6. Michael borrows money from his uncle who is charging him simple interest using the formula I equals PRT. What? What kind of uncle is this? To figure out what the interest rate R is, Michael rearranges the formula to find R. His new formula is R equals what? So basically all Michael did is he took I equals PRT and just solve for R. In order to solve for R, since all of these um, numbers are being, well, in this case, these are letters, but these do represent numbers. So all these numbers are being multiplied together. So you're just going to divide by PT on both sides. And then you get R is equal to I over PT, which is equal to or the same thing as choice three. All right, number seven. It's a weird uncle. Number seven, um, which equation is equivalent to Y minus 34 equals X times X minus 12? Okay, so this is... I'm going to rearrange this for a second here. So x times x minus 12. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this as much as I possibly can by distributing that x first. I get y minus 34 is equal to x squared minus 12x. Then you add the 34 on both sides, right? So then we get y is equal to x squared minus 12x plus 34. Can this be factored by what, add, by what adds to negative 12 and multiplies to give you positive 34? Unfortunately, I cannot think of any two numbers that multiply to give you 34 and add to give you negative 12. So that means you, we, ha well, blah, blah. we have to complete the square. 
We got to figure this out some other way. So completing the square. So remember how to complete the square. You take your numbers, put them to one side, take your letters, put them on the other side. So we have x squared minus 12x plus something equals negative 34 plus something. We just move that over here. And now we figure out, well, what is that number? Well, all we do is we just take half the middle term and you square it. Take half of negative 12, square it, we get 36. So there's going to be 36 and 36. Now we could factor this by what adds to negative 12 and multiplies to give you 36. That is x minus 6. x minus 6 is equal to the number 2. And that is just x minus 6 squared is equal to 2. And we could subtract the 2 on both sides. So we get x minus 6 squared minus 2. That is equal to y. And that is the same thing as saying it is choice 4. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do that question. So your answer for number 7 is choice 4. Moving on to number 8. The equation A equals 1300 times 1.02 raised to the 7th is being used to calculate the amount of money in a savings account. What does 1.02 represent in this equation? So if you don't know by now, please do. A of t is equal to the principal times 1 plus or minus the rate raised to the t power. So if this in here is 1.02, well, it's just going to be 1.02 plus... No, I'm sorry. 1.02 is equal to 1 plus r. Now remember that this is um, this is being well. This is increasing because it's greater. Th this number right here is greater than the number one. So that's why I'm using my plus sign here. It's not minus. It's it's not decaying. It's growing. Um, so we're so we're going to subtract the one on both sides. So we get 0.02 is equal to r, but r represents a 2% growth because we just have to take that decimal point and move it two places to the right. So this resembles 2% growth, which is going to be choice four for that question. All right, number nine. The zeros of the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 are what? So all you do is you take this equation and you set it equal to zero. So before we do that, we have to factor out a two. You're left with x squared minus two x uh, minus three equals zero. That two just drops out. Now you figure out, well, what adds to negative two multiplies to give you negative three. That is x minus three x plus one equals zero. T bar, you get x equals positive three and x is equal to negative one. Your answer is choice one. Pretty simple stuff. Awesome. Number 10, when 2x minus 3 squared is subtracted from 5x squared, the result is what? So whatever comes after the word from goes first. So we have 5x squared minus in parentheses 2x minus 3 squared. Now we need to expand 2x minus 3 squared. So we get 5x squared minus, I'm going to put this in a big bracket here, 5x squared minus in parentheses 2x minus 3 2x minus 3. Then we distribute. So we get 5x squared minus in parentheses. Uh, this is going to be 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Now we got to distribute that negative 1. And from here, we simplify it to 5x squared minus 4x squared plus 12x minus 9. Continuing to solve, we then get 5x squared. No, I'm sorry, not 5x squared. We get we just get x squared uh, plus 12x minus 9. And that is going to be choice three. All right, how are we doing so far? Are we doing well? I hope we are. Moving on to number 11. Joe has a rectangular patio that measures 10 feet by 12 feet. He wants to increase the area by 50% and plans to increase each dimension by equal lengths of x. Which equation could be used to determine x? Well, first and foremost, what you want to do is you want to calculate the area before the increase. Because he does want to increase the area. So the area before the increase is 10 times 12, which is 120 units. Now, 
the area after the increase is 120 times 0 0.50 for that 50 percent. That will give you 60. But remember, you're taking 60 and now you're adding 120 back on again and you get 180. So 180 is the area after the increase. Now, he wants to increase each dimension by equal lengths of x. So therefore, the length, which is already 10 feet, he wants to add x to it. So that's his length. The width is 12, and he wants to add x to it. So your equation is just going to be 10 plus x, 12 plus x, and that's going to equal the new area of 180. We're looking for that answer, and that answer is going to be choice 2 for that question. All right, final question of the video. When factored completely, x to the third minus 13x minus 30x is what? So what you got to do is you got to say, all right, what is the order of factoring? Well, it's GCF followed by dots followed by the trinomial method. So GCF, I could take out an X because all of these terms have an X value. We take out an X, we're left with X squared minus 13X minus 30. Okay, so now we got to figure out, well, what adds to negative 13 and multiplies to give you negative 30? Well, that's just X. This will give us X plus 2 x minus 15 and that is your simplified answer your answer is going to be choice three all right and that's how you do question number 12 pretty simple all right that is the conclusion of this video i hope it helped and uh, i hope it helped you in preparation make sure they hit that subscribe button down there below and make sure that you visit my website at www.nysmathregionsprep.com for much more math content in Algebra 1 and future mathematical subjects in your future. And I hope to see you soon.